Good morning, Owls. Today is Friday, May the 8th. Wow, we've reached Friday. All right, guys. Now, <clears throat> we've been talking about the letter P. P says P, P, P. And we've also been talking about pets. Pets begin with the letter P. P, pet. The letter P. P, P, P. Now, I'm going to read a story to you today. <clears throat> this is a really good story. And it's about a pet. <gasps> and this pet is a cat. But you know what? This cat's name actually begins with the letter P. <gasps> My cat's name is Puss. <clears throat> so we're going to read the story today of <gasps> Puss in Boots. All right, now I will show you the pictures, but remember, Miss Benham needs to be able to read the words, okay? And I'll hold it up so you can see the pictures a little bit better. So here's Puss. Here he is. Look at that, and he's wearing boots. Have you ever seen a cat wearing boots? I know, I have it. Once upon a time, there was a certain miller, and he had three sons. And when he died, he split up all of his worldly goods between his three sons. The eldest son had the mill. The second son received the donkey, and the third son received the cat. Oh, my God goodness oh and he was very disappointed to receive such a miserable portion my brothers he said will be able to get a decent living by joining together but i only have the cat what will i do with that and the remarks were heard by puss who pretended not to have been listening and who said very shortly and very seriously there is not the least need for you to worry, Master. All you have to do is give me a pouch and get a pair of boots made for me so that I can walk in the woods. You will find then that your share is not so bad after all. <gasps> hmm, I wonder what Puss is going to do with the boots. Now, this cat had often shown himself capable of performing clever tricks. When catching rats and mice, for example, he would hide himself nearby their food and pretend to be asleep. His master, therefore, thought he did not build too much on what the cat had said, felt some hope of being assisted in this miserable plight. And when his master gave Puss the pair of boots that he had asked for, Puss gaily pulled them on. That means he was very happy to put the boots on. Then Puss hung the pouch around his neck and holding the cords that tied it in front of him with his paws, he went into a warren where a great number of rabbits lived. Placing some bran and lettuce in the pouch, he stretched himself out and lay down as if asleep. His plan was to wait until some young rabbit came. And hardly had he laid himself down when a rabbit came up and he quickly got it and gave it to his master. <gasps> oh my goodness. Puss departed to a king's palace. There he demanded an audience with the king and was ushered inside. I bring you, sire, he said, a rabbit from the warren of the Marquis of Carabas. Such was the title he invented for his master, which he has asked me to present to you on his behalf. See, there's Puss, and he's bringing the rabbit to the king. Tell your master, replied the king, that I thank him and am pleased with his attentions. Another time, the cat hid himself and captured two partridges. Those are two birds. And brought them to the king. And the king was pleased again with what the cat had brought. And for two or three months, Puss went the same way and did the same thing. Every now and again presenting to the king a gift from his master. Some new type of game that he had caught. Sharing it with his master as well. See, there's the king. Oh my goodness, this puss, he is smart. There soon came a day when puss learned that the king intended 
to take his young daughter, who was the most beautiful princess in the world, for a carriage ride along the riverbed. If you will do as I tell you, said Puss to his master, your fortune will be made. Ooh, I wonder what Puss has planned. You have only to go and bathe in the river at the spot that I will point out to you. Leave the rest to me. So the young man went for a swim and Puss quickly stole all of his clothes. <gasps> oh my goodness. And Puss began to call, help, help, the Marquis of Carabas is drowning. And when he heard these shouts, the king stuck his head out of the carriage window and he recognized the cat who had so often brought him gifts. And he asked his guards to immediately help the Marquis. With the guards pulling him out and giving him some clothes, Puss approached the carriage and explained to the king what had happened. The king at once commanded the keepers of his wardrobe to select a suit of his finest clothes for the young man to wear. The king greeted the marquis with many compliments, and as the fine and as the fine clothes that the marquis had put on made him look like a gentleman and set off his good looks, for he was very handsome. The king's daughter found him very much to her liking. So there they are. Oh my goodness, that was really smart, wasn't it? Oh my goodness. As they were rolling along in the carriage, there were many workers in the fields and Puss told them to cheer when the carriage went by because that's where the king was. And the king was so impressed with the land that the Marquis had. Now, along the way, Puss heard of an ogre that lived. Oh my goodness, look at this guy. He's really big, isn't he? And Puss tricked that ogre into turning himself into a mouse. And Puss quickly came along and gobbled up the mouse. And the ogre was no more. And Puss told the king that this is where the Marquis lived. And the Marquis and the princess fell in love and got married and they lived happily ever after with Puss. Wasn't that a great story, Owls? So our story had a cat and the cat's name was Puss and Puss begins with P. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the story. I'll talk to you later. Bye.